today we are duping high-end decor and we are saving ourselves thousands of dollars. And after we're finished with our last dupe, I'm gonna show you how to style it three different ways. We have a lot to do today, so let's get started. Our first dupe is from the Horchow website. It's this beautiful orchid urn. It looks like a decorative box to me. The black box with the silver top is so pretty. I love those branches and the gold flowers. The only thing I would change about it is the price. This beautiful orchid urn is $625. I do not want to spend that, so let's create one for ourselves. The first thing that we need is a box. So I headed over to Hobby Lobby. They have a great selection of wooden boxes and luckily for me, they were 40% off. I found this wooden box that is the exact same size as our inspiration piece. I needed to remove the original hardware that came with the wooden box. So I got my screwdriver and I unscrewed both of the screws, one on either side, and then removed the hardware. Now I have a blank slate to work with. We need to spray paint the bottom of our box black. So I took it outside and I sprayed it in some black semi-gloss spray paint. I did the underside and the four sides first. Once the bottom and the sides were coated in the spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. Then I flipped it over and to keep the box elevated, I like to use the paint can lid. That way it doesn't get stuck to the paper. So once it was in place, I continued painting the four sides one more time to make sure everything was sufficiently coated in the paint, and I also painted the inside. Once everything had been painted, I let it dry for one more hour. The top of our inspiration piece was silver, so we're going to paint our lid silver. Again, I took it outside, I painted the bottom of the lid first. Once that was done, I let it dry for about a half an hour, I flipped it over and I painted the top and then let it dry for one hour. What I really loved about our inspiration piece was the top with the pretty branches and the gold orchid flower. It was really hard trying to figure out how I was going to recreate it. But we are going to do it with some dried Mitsumata branches. I found a bunch of these at Hobby Lobby and these were also on sale, which was fantastic for my budget. I do not need a long branch, so what I'm gonna do is cut off a few pieces from the top of one of the branches. The color right now is a creamy white, and we need to change that to a black and silver combination. So what I'm gonna do is spray the branches black first. I did a light coat, and then I got my silver paint, and I dusted that paint over the top. I just did a couple of quick splurts just to make sure that the silver was on there, but that it didn't cover up the black paint that was on there first. Once I was satisfied with the way that everything looked, I let it dry for just about 10 minutes, and then I flipped it over and I did the exact same thing. I painted the black paint on these branches first and then dusted a light coat of the silver paint over the top. Now, I think that this painting technique worked beautifully. These branches are just the right color. Now, we need some flowers. And so, I didn't really know what to use because I needed them to be solid. So, once again, shopping at Hobby Lobby, I went down the knob aisle and I found these beautiful floral knobs. They're the right size, the right shape, and the right price. These were on sale as well. Now, the only thing that needs to be changed is the color of these knobs. So what I did was I got a paper cup and I poked the screw through the paper cup, which held my flowers in place. And then I spray painted them in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the sides of the top of these floral knobs were coated in the spray paint. Once everything was sufficiently covered, I let it dry for one hour. Now that we have all of our pieces, it's time to assemble. So what I'm gonna do first is drill some holes in the top. I'm using my fabulous Athena drill. I drilled one hole that was a little closer to the front and off to the side, and then I drilled a second hole further to the back and off to the opposite side. Before we attach our knobs to the lid, we're going to add our branches on there first. 
I just got some hot glue and I added hot glue to the branches and then placed them on the lid. I pressed those branches firmly so that they would adhere very well. I had three separate mini branches that I hot glued on top of the lid. Now it's time to add our floral knobs. So I just took the screw and I poked it through the hole, flipped it over and added the washer and the nut which held this first knob in place. Then I moved on to my second knob, poked it through the hole and added the washer and the nut to the back. So now this knob is attached to the lid as well. Now that everything's on, we can put that lid back onto our box. And here is what it looks like. You guys, I love the way that this looks. We were able to recreate an almost identical piece for so much less. This is a beautiful decorative accessory. I love the different metallics on here. The silver, gold, and black of the box looks classy and the branches make this box look unique. We were able to recreate our Inspiration Orchid Urn for so much less. After calculating all the costs that went into creating this beautiful box, it only cost me $32.97. So we saved hundreds of dollars duping this I'm loving the way this decorative box turned out and it's always great to do it on a budget. Our next dupe is from the Paragold website. It's this beautiful table vase. I love the white and the gold accents, the stripes and the handles. Everything about this table vase is simply stunning except for the price. It is on sale though right now. It's on sale for $412, which I still do not want to pay. So let's recreate it for less. First, we need a vase. I was at Hobby Lobby in the clearance section and I came across these vases. They are the perfect shape and the silhouette is so similar. And you cannot beat the price of $6.24. So I picked up two because I love having a pair. Now, the things that I did not like about these vases was the top rim and base had a bumpy, uneven texture, and the black and cream was a little too stark for my taste. There was also a crackle effect on the vase, and I prefer a smooth, cohesive color. To get that color, I'm going to take my vases outside and spray them in some white Krylon spray paint. I made sure that the surface of the vases were completely covered in this white spray paint. I sprayed along the bottom and the sides. Once everything had been sufficiently covered in the paint, I let these vases dry for one hour. What caught my attention on these vases in the first place was the beautiful gold accents on there. The stripes along the top, middle, and bottom were so pretty and I loved the handles. To create our stripes, I'm going to be using some blue painter's tape. I went around the circumference of the vase. I made sure that the tape was pressed firmly to the container. Next, I moved on to the center of the vase. I added a line of tape to create a border. Then I left about a quarter of an inch in between the bottom and the top line of tape. I taped along the bottom portion. I went around the entire circumference of the vase and made sure that the tape was pressed firmly to the container. To create our gold detail, I'm going to be using some gold rub and buff. So I got a paper towel and this gold rub and buff. I added a dab of this rub and buff to the paper towel and then wiped it onto my container. I added a decent amount. I wanted to make sure that the gold was on my container really well and that the saturation level was high. Once I was finished with the baseline, I moved on to the center line. I added a decent amount of the rub and buff to the vacant area in between the two pieces of blue painter's tape. I went around the entire circumference of the vase and added a thick layer of rub and buff. Finally, I moved up to the rim and did the exact same thing by adding the rub and buff to the top portion of this vase. Once I was finished with my first vase, I moved on to the second vase and I did the exact same steps. I taped it off and then I added the rub and buff to the bottom, the middle, and the top. 
This gold leaf rubbing buff does not take very long to dry. It's more like a wax, so I waited maybe 20 minutes and then I could remove the blue painter's tape. I love how sharp and crisp these lines are. They look professional and the gold is the perfect tone. Our inspiration piece had some gold rings on either side of the container. So what I'm gonna do is use some knobs. Again, these were from Hobby Lobby. They are almost identical to our inspiration piece. And we don't even need to change the paint color on this. It's already the perfect shade of gold. So what I did was I removed the screw, the washer and the nut from the back of the knob. Then I got some crazy glue and hot glue. Now the crazy glue is going to hold our knobs onto the vase long term, but while we're waiting for that to dry, the hot glue will hold it in place. So I added both the crazy glue and the hot glue to each of the four knobs and then pressed them firmly to the vase. Once everything was in place, I let it dry overnight. Okay, you guys, we're done with our two vases. Look at how stunning these are. They are simply gorgeous. I love those knobs. Look how cute those knobs are. And the gold stripes on there are just perfect. They're not too much of a detail, but they definitely add a touch of class and sophistication. And of course, our vases came in at a much more reasonable price. After calculating all the costs that went into creating two vases, it was $38.45, which is a huge savings over our $412 inspiration piece. And if I would have bought two of their containers, it would have been $824. So we saved $785.55. That's that's huge. So look in the clearance section, you guys. They always have some fantastic things. And all you need to do is use a little creativity to recreate them into something fabulous. We had an amazing savings and I think our vases are just as beautiful. Our next tie-in dupe is this Tolan Mini Hurricane. Again, this is from the Horchow website. It's a great basic piece that would stand the test of time. The size is fantastic and I love the gold base. What we do not love is the price of $285. I know that we can make one for less. So the first thing we need is a glass container. Now, if you watched last week's episode, you saw me and some of my favorite friends go on a little shopping trip to Goodwill. And during that shopping trip, I found this beautiful cylindrical glass container. The size was fantastic, and so was the price. It was only $6.99. So we already have our container. What we need next is a gold base. Hobby Lobby has those wood rounds that I love so much. They're a great size. They have a beautiful detail along the rim and the price of these wood rounds are only $3.49, which is fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand down this wood round first because sometimes some of the edges are a little uneven and bumpy. So I sanded down the edge and the top and the bottom of this wood round to get it very smooth. Now it's prepped and ready for paint. I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna spray it in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted the bottom and the sides of this wood round first, then I flipped it over and I put it on top of that lid again to raise it up and I painted the top and the sides once more in this gold spray paint. Once everything was sufficiently covered, I let it dry for one hour. Now I can take my large glass container and place it over the top of the gold round. And ta-da, we're done with this dupe. I know you might be thinking, wah wah, that was pretty basic, but that's okay. Sometimes the basic pieces are the best. And we were able to save ourselves so much money. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my hurricane, it came in at a total of $13.48. 
which is a $271.52 savings over our inspiration piece. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you three different ways how to style this hurricane. So let's start off with the first. Since it's spring, we're gonna start off styling it for this season. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this smaller Dollar Tree base, I'm gonna put it in the center. Now this is gonna give stability to the other items that we're gonna put around it. Next, we're gonna get some springtime Hershey Kisses. Pour those around. This is fun because the wrappers on these Hershey Kisses are pastel, which is perfect for spring. Okay, so now we've got our bottom layer of Hershey Kisses. Now we're gonna take some marshmallow bunnies and I'm gonna keep them in a layer of two. So I'm just going to put them just like this and I'm going to pop them right in front of the vase. So I've got my cute little bunnies. We're gonna pop those right inside. I've got my last little layer I'm gonna put over here. So now my marshmallows and my Hershey Kisses are in my container. I'm going to get a bunch of flowers. I chose some pretty pink pastel flowers. I'm just gonna bend the stem really tight and just place them right inside of my vase. And that is it, you guys. How cute is this? Hurricanes like this are perfect for seasonal decorations. You could put in some red, white, and blue candy for the 4th of July, Halloween candy, Christmas candy, Valentine's. The possibilities are endless. So this is just one way that we can style this hurricane. I love the way it looks. It's perfect for spring. Seriously, you guys, I can't get over how absolutely adorable this thing is. And you saw how easy it was. So this is styling number one. Let's move on to styling it another way. The second way is we're going to add a cute little floral arrangement inside. So what I did was I got some floral foam. I added it to the bottom and I reuse my floral foam. Just because it has a couple little holes in it doesn't mean that you have to toss it. I reuse my floral foam all the time. So yes, this foam looks a little sketchy, but it's gonna get the job done. So once my floral foam was in place, I got some moss and I placed that over the floral foam to hide that. Next, I took some stems of roses. I had cut these stems short so that they would fit inside of the container. I poked the individual stems into the floral foam, which holds them upright. I added about five to six stems and that's it. This display is so whimsical. It looks like a little terrarium. If you wanted to, you could add some little fairy houses in there or some rocks. Succulents would be fantastic. Any kind of lighthearted or fanciful objects in here would be so cute. The next way we're going to style it is perfect for indoor or outdoor. So what I'm gonna do is grab several handfuls of white pebbles. I placed these little rocks inside the bottom of the container. Next, I got three battery operated candles. I turned them on. I took the tallest candle first and placed it in the back of the glass vase. I moved those rocks around and nestled that candle right inside the center of the rocks. I placed the medium height candle to one side and then added the shorter candle to the opposite side. This centerpiece would be beautiful for dining outside during the summertime, but it would also be beautiful on a tablescape inside. I love the flicker that the candles add, the natural elements of the rocks and the fire are rustic and unrefined. Now I just showed you three ways to style it, but the possibilities are as endless as your creativity is. Now I loved all of the dupes that we did today each one of them turned out so beautifully, if not more beautiful than our expensive inspiration pieces. We can live beautifully every day by getting creative and using items that we can purchase, 
and recreate within our budget. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe so I can share those with you. Thank you so much for watching.